Um, welcome, everyone. It's really great to gather with you all, despite um, having to do it on a computer on this beautiful day. Um, my name is Megan Browning, and I work for NOFA Vermont. I've worked for NOFA as the Winter Conference Coordinator for the past five years, which um, I might know of you, some of you through that capacity. And I'm just um, joining the team in a year-round role on the Farmer Services team, which is what brings me to be with all of you tonight um, hosting this webinar. I um, am really excited about the folks that have gathered here. And I wanna say that one of the goals here is to um, have the folks who are gonna present share a little bit. And also it would be really great to, um, the, one of the goals here is to really open up for some questions and answers and discussion amongst all of you who are here, um, all of you growers who have so much knowledge and expertise and, um, we're really all navigating this time together. So helpful to be in a space where we can, where we can share our um, wisdom together. Um, I will just give a brief overview of our agenda. We're going to hear from Christina and Abby from the Agency of Agriculture, who are going to talk about the recently released guidelines on Pick Your Own. Um, and then we're going to hear from you, Janie Doyle of Last Resort Farm and Sue Haney from Sweet Seasons Farm, who can share a little bit about the plans that they have put in place for their Pick Your Own at their farms. And then we'll open it up for some question and answer um, and some discussion, at which point it would be great for folks to contribute any um, sharing about thoughts and ideas and plans that you're putting in place on your farm that you want to share about um, and also a good time to bring in some questions and that's another place to use the chat box um, and during the presentations in the beginning also feel free to use the chat box we can start sort of collecting questions so that when we get to that discussion time um, we'll have a little back a backlog of, of, of topics that are of interest um, so before we um, bring Christina and Abby on I do just want to um, just very briefly acknowledge the moment that we're in and sort of the heaviness of the times that we are all collectively experiencing. There's quite a bit of grief and sadness and loss um, in our lives right now, collectively. And however you're experiencing that for you, I would love to just um, take a big breath together to be here. Um, so if we can all just breathe in and breathe out and we will with that focus our attention on something really joyful um, which is pick your own where um, I, I think it's really exciting I know this some of the things that we're going to talk about tonight are um, might be you know things that are making more work or providing more challenge but it's really important to remember how joyful and nourishing pick your own is for your community. So again, huge thank you and gratitude to everyone who's here and for all the hard work you're doing to make Pick Your Own possible for people in a time that feels feels really heavy. I think Pick Your Own is a beautiful, nourishing and light, light thing that we're all bringing to the community. So thank you for that. And um, without, without any more ado, I'll introduce Christina and Abby to um, talk to us a little bit about the guidelines that were released. Thank you so much, Megan. I'm Christina Sweet from the Vermont Agency of Agriculture, and I'm here today with our Director of Agricultural Development, Abby Willard, and we don't want to spend too much time on uh, the nitty gritty of the pick your own guidance because we really want to hear from the farmers on the webinar today and answer your questions, but we do want to give a brief introduction to how these guidelines came about and how they fit within the broader context of operations guidance and the general guidance that has been published by the Agency of Commerce and Community Development. So I'm going to really share my screen. Christina, your audio is a little funny. Hmm. We did check it earlier today. Um, funny in like a... Sounds better now, Christina. It was, it was a little choppy, but I think you're back. Okay. Well, hopefully it'll stay that way. I'm going to share my screen and just give me a thumbs up, Megan, if you can see my screen. Great. Yeah, and I might have to switch. Do you see like the the notes view? Because I can switch it if possible. Yeah, we are seeing the notes view. Okay, great. I'm gonna swap preventer. 
there you should see the correct one now. Awesome. Yep. Great, and at this point, I will invite Abby to just give a little bit of an introduction and a background on how these guidelines came to be. Thanks, Christina. Um, and hi, everybody. I agree with Megan. It's a nice evening, finally. We've had a couple of rainy days, which maybe has been good for growing conditions, but um, everyone's anxious, I'm sure, to get back outside. Um, or maybe most of you have been outside all day, and it's just those of the rest of us that have been in the office all day and happy to get out for the first time. Um, just as a brief introduction about Pick Your Own um, and, and a little bit of a background of how we came to be here on June 4th, um, when the governor announced the stay home, stay safe order at the end of March, um, we very quickly recognized that Pick Your Own was one of the areas that we wanted to have as clear a guidance as possible as soon as we could, recognizing that pivots in how food is made available to consumers needs time and preparation. So it was the end of April um, that we actually worked closely with Vern and a few others within the industry as subject matter experts to um, draft some proposed language that we hoped would be valuable um, to the administration as it was looking at um, introducing specific guidance for specific sectors. And we shared that proposed guidance with the governor's office, um, the Department of Health, and um, the Agency of Commerce and Community Development at the end of April. And then as everyone knows, there were a variety of executive order addendums that were um, issued that brought in additional requirements for various uh, business sectors. So on um, May 1st, we received the additional employee and training and require training and employee um, public health and safety requirements. Um, the addendum 12, just days later, offered additional clarification around facial coverings and hand sanitation requirements. And then on May 18th was the release of retail guidance. And then on June 1st, there was the issuance of the pick your own guidance that was very, um, was a sort of a modification to the, the retail guidance that was very specific to the pick your own kind of community. So um, Christina and I will kind of go through all the different aspects of where different requirements exist and originated, as well as what's unique to the pick your own community. Um, but just the most important thing I, I think to recognize is that, um, our intent was to get information to you all as quickly um, as possible, keeping in the forefront of our mind the public health and safety requirements. You, you sort of are pre-tested um, by the farmer's market community who worked with us in the first iteration of Agency of Agriculture issued guidance. And I'll admit that it was a bit bumpy to begin with um, because a lot of the processes and um, decision-making uh, authority was unclear and I feel that um, you know that happened earliest in the pandemic and we've gotten much clearer in the process now so um, the hope in this presentation is that you feel um, the appreciation and the acknowledgement from the agency about the value and the virtue of pick your own operations and the importance of having farms be open and um, viable while also uh, engaging in the public health and safety requirements, mainly around social distancing and um, keeping both consumers and your staff and yourselves safe. Um, and then we're here to answer questions so that if there's things that you specifically want to ask about, we'll do our very best, answer them on the call. And if not on the call, um, definitely get back to you. Thank you, Abby. Ending it back to Christina for a bit. Great. Well, as Abby mentioned, since we originally worked on this restart plan, the Agency of Commerce and Community Development and the Governor's Office have published additional addendums to the executive order that have introduced guidelines that apply to all businesses, nonprofits, and government operations throughout the state. So really, this Pick Your Own Restart plan is nested within two other layers of guidance and in and of itself has a relatively small number of requirements in relation to those broader sets of guidance. So the most broad is the work safe additions to the Be Smart, Stay Safe 
order, which was addendum 14 of the governor's executive order. And that states that all businesses, whether essential or not, must follow the health and safety requirement in the HR work safe guidance. There have since been sector specific guidances for multiple sectors as part of that phase restart work safe guidance. But in general, that is mandatory health and then again there's the sector specific guidance so the guide sector specific guidance that applies in this case to pick your own is the retail operation guidance so there are a few general requirements under the retail operation guidance it sets occupancy limits for non-essential retail operations that take place indoors it states that after transaction, pickup remains preferred where possible, and then it nests the pick your own agricultural producers and states that they should follow the best practices identified in the Agency of Agriculture's Pick Your Own Restart Plan. This retail guidance in this form was published last Friday and stated that we would publish the Pick Your Own Restart Plan on Monday, and I'm really excited that we are able to make that happen. All of these sets of guidances can be found at the Agency of Commerce and Community Development website, accd.vermont.gov. And you can also find the Pick Your Own Restart Plan as well as lots of resources that are specifically oriented toward agricultural producers on our website at the agriculture.vermont.gov or vermontagriculture.com and you can see that thing you see on the website and that'll take you to a large number of resources that we've organized to the best of our ability to make it easy for people to find as well as the market guidance and the just published pick your own restart plan now in a moment abby's going to introduce some of the guidelines in the pick your own restart plan but i just wanted to highlight that they're really divided into three buckets there are required practices for health and safety there's a physical distancing plan and then there are requirements for postings and notifications both for employees and for customers so that's the way the plan is organized and there are just a few specific requirements that build on top of these requirements from the phase restart work safe guidance and the retail operation guidance that are specific to pick your own that you'll find in this plan. So Abby, would you do you want to share your screen or would you like me to um, just go and pull up the plan from my screen? Um, since you're presenting, why don't you just I mean I have it up as well, but why don't you see if it's easy for you okay, to get great. it on yours and I'll just I'll get started. Um, Sounds good. Doesn't work. Let me know. Um, so Christina did a great job of sort of um, d explaining the connection of all the different um, areas of guidance for businesses, some of which are agricultural and some of which um, have picked your own operations as a part of their business. Um, so I'm going to specifically talk about these three sections that are uniquely um, included in the pick your own restart plan. And um, some of them, again, are related to retail businesses, and some of them are very specific to um, the pick your own operation specifically. So in that first section of required practices, um, you know, that, that talk about um, limiting outdoor in-person picking, which is the occupancy piece that admits no more than one customer per 200 square feet of crop space that's currently being harvested or picked at that time. With a reminder that the hope is for uh, pre-scheduled visits to help manage the number of customers kind of arriving at the same time at the farm with the anticipation of engaging in UPIC. The second has to do with managing customer flow through your operation so that social distancing is adhered to at all times so that if there's tight rows or um, congested areas where employees and customers may be within close proximity wanting to maintain some sort of flow through the farm where at least six feet of distance is maintained um, at all times. So whether that's 
as you're entering the farm while you're picking or um, after you've paid and are exiting, um, exiting the harvest area. Um, a very specific piece around containers and tools. Um, so Christina, are you still trying to pull it up? There we go. I'll just wait for one quick second. And you're on mute, so I can't hear you. Christina, do you want me to wait a moment? I mean, I think it'll, it'll, I was sharing it from Teams, but it wasn't like doing, I couldn't get it to appear in full screen. So I think maybe it makes more sense for you to share it your, from your screen. Sorry about okay. that. Okay, that's okay. Um, let's do a screen share here. Okay, can you guys see the plan? Let me know if you can. Yes. Okay, great. So um, I just so want to increase um, the size a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. Even more. That so looks better. good to me. Okay. Um, sorry for the, the technical difficulty. So um, I was just moving into containers and tools, which again, I don't think any of this is a surprise and must, most of this already occurs on Pick Your Own Operations where um, containers either need to be clean containers provided and, and contributed by the customer who maintains control over them at all times um, or disposable containers that are provided by the farm or reusable containers that have been clean and disinfected with clean uses. Uh, retail stations, so just a reminder that um, the goal is that sales occur outdoor whenever possible, just so we are functioning in that outdoor environment as best we can, um, and that transactions be conducted in advance or uh, cashless um, whenever possible. So very similar to the guidance and recommendations for farmers markets. Um, the utilization of a sneeze guard um, that's routinely cleaned and disinfected, as well as access to hand sanitizer um, that's that greater than 60% alcohol um, on site. So again, basic provisions that are um, generally expected of all businesses at this time. Um, a piece that I think we can talk through in greater detail has to do with this item 1.6, which is um, in an attempt to really limit uh, the possible contamination of product being picked would be um, to restrict the consumption of food, including in the field, um, which is always, I think, the expectation or the, the desire um, by customers. So, and there was, there have been some questions that we've received and I'm happy to go into those details maybe after we get through this around what if the farm happens to also sell creamies or other food items in addition to having their pick your own operation, which we can talk through. Um, the second phase of the plan includes the physical distancing components. So again, most of these are what other retail businesses are required to adhere to, which have to do with um, social distancing, doing online or pre-orders whenever possible, um, maintaining that indoor retail um, occupancy limit of up to 25% of the approved fire safety occupancy or one customer per 200 square feet, as we talked about earlier. Um, and the piece that's unique to Pick Your Own Operations is um, maintaining that same, uh, social, that same occupancy in the field, in the harvest area. So one customer per 200 square feet of crop space and really extending that to be, um, as we talked about earlier, again, that where you're waiting, when you're harvesting, when you're paying, and when you're entering or, or leaving your vehicle to um, also require employees and customers to be socially distancing at um, no less than six feet apart. Um, in the addendum, um, which one was it? Let's see. I guess it was addendum 11, where the um, 
public health and safety officer was outlined for businesses to have on, on site. That's what this uh, 2.5 refers to is having a health and safety officer ensuring safety compliance around traffic flow and customers um, spacing while um, awaiting or while in the harvest area. So just having someone that's sort of responsible for adherence to um, the executive order as well as the pick your own restart plan requirements. Um, no more than two persons in a vehicle, so nothing to do exactly with the picking activity likely, but um, more to do with just sort of the, the farm and pick your own operation, which, which others have heard about before. The last section having to do with um, signage and postings. So um, part of, again, the expectation is this employee education and awareness around the public health and safety requirements. So having an internal document distributed to all employees that discusses the social distancing and public health and safety requirements. Having that designated health officer um, available on site at the farm. And then uh, section 3.3 .3 is around um, visible signage that a pick your own operation would be expected to have, which includes a reminder that pre-order sales are um, prioritized and preferred. Um, identifying the maximum occupancy of customers in your indoor and your outdoor locations based upon your fire code re requirements. Um, the protocol around maintaining at least a minimum of six foot distance while awaiting entry into the, pick, the UPIC area. Um, customers should wear appropriate facial coverings and uh, the reminder that if you are sick, um, have symptoms, or uh, feel that you may have had contact with someone that's COVID positive to uh, please stay home and, and not um, be at a pick your own uh, operation at that time. And then lastly is um, that a written plan um, being provided or drafted that ensures that all safety, health, and sanitation requirements are being followed um, on the farm, which again is sort of an expectation of um, businesses in general. And Christina reminded me that on the Agency of Commerce and Community Development website, they have various templates available if you're curious um, that include um, kind of what such a plan might look like and components that you could expect to see included, if that would be helpful. So um, that's that's it. That's the that's the restart plan. That's the guidance that's relevant to um, pick your own. And um, I think we can open it up to questions or, or back to you, Megan, as to how you want to proceed. Yeah. Thanks, Abby and Christina, so much. Um, Abby, we can maybe we can go ahead and unscrew unshare your screen at this point. Yeah. Um, so the, what, what we're going to do is hear a little bit um, just right now from you, Janie, and then hear from Sue to get a, get a sense of how they're thinking about this and applying the, the restart plan on their farms. And then we will um, move into some questions. So I'm sure there's plenty. I also just want to um, remind and folks and invite people to use that chat box as a as a place to put your questions. So if there's questions that are coming up now for you, that's a good place to start um, asking them and, and Abby and Christina can also be answering questions in that in that space during the call. Um, so I will turn it over to you, Janie, to share a little bit about Last Resort Farm. Okay. Um, yeah, this is our um, 39th year growing strawberries. And um, I don't think anything that we learned in those 39 years is going to help, particularly. <laughs> this is all new. It's a brave new world. Um, but I can, I can share with you some of the elements of our, uh, I don't know if you can see that. All right. This is a document that we wrote up. And now, after discussing it with my son, we're basically going to redo it. So I, I think we all have to stay very flexible this year. Um, but I'll outline basically what we're thinking of and uh, some of the challenges that we are thinking of addressing. Um, 
I guess I would say the first thing is uh, that we really want to stay positive about this. Um, inevitably, people are going to be disappointed because it's different, particularly in the area of dealing with um, sizes of groups and with uh, children. But I will get to that. So we are going to have people make appointments. We're going to use um, our Squarespace sign up. I think it's called Squarespace Scheduler to do this. I think other platforms that are working well for people. Uh, there's one called Sign Up Genius that I think has been working very well for some of the um, uh, plant sales and uh, greenhouses recently. We'll ask people to do a two hour slot. Um, and we will, we're going to uh, sort of underestimate how many berries we'll have and um, um, and how much space we ha have. I think according to those guidelines, we could have about 250 people here at once, but we realize we're not going to be able to um, kind of manage them. So, so we're aiming for more like 15 cars at a time and limiting the size of the group to four, four people per car. Um, we will post signs. The you know, first one will be, if you feel sick at all, go home, come back when you feel better. Um, we are asking people to park in uh, one of the assigned spots and then wait in their car until somebody comes over to, to ask them to go to the place where they'll pick up containers. Um, we are asking people to wear a mask. Uh, again, I'm not exactly sure how to deal with this with, with uh, children, but I, maybe you all have some ideas about this. And asking people to, um, once they're let out of their car, to go to a wash station, wash their hands or, or use hand sanitizer. And then proceed to this the place where, and this is another big change, um, to pick up containers, which we'll have in three sizes. Our aim this year, and I think this is going to cost us money, but um, our aim is to sell by volume rather than weight. Um, and this is strawberries I'm talking about. I know some of you guys are in other pick your own areas, but for right now, strawberries. Um, we're going to just have people pick into quart, four quart, and eight quart flats. We will provide the containers, and we're still debating whether to let people bring their own. But if they bring their own, they need to be in those, um, those sizes. And we'll have a fixed price for those. Um, again, I think that that's an area of kind of quandary because um, one person's eight quart flat can look a lot. I think we've had 15 pounds in an eight quart flat at once. So yeah, so that's, um, I would like to uh, eliminate the need for handling scales and handling containers back and forth. So that's, we'll try that the first week and then you can get back to me and we'll see how that works. Um, this is gonna, you know, we will have to have, I guess I'm the designated health officer because nobody else seems to want to do that, but, um, and I will be welcoming people in. We'll then have uh, people, uh, staff, lead somebody out to the field and, and assign them a row in the field. I really don't think the maintaining the six foot distance is going to be any problem at all. I think that that's fairly simple in a, in a strawberry field. The question about not eating, um, again, I, I don't think that that's an issue really, except for children. And um, maybe you guys all have some ideas about that. We have in the past had and it's been a great thing for our farm, a children's field, a kid's field where there were no rules at all. And we've had a lot of people come for that. Um, those were, uh, were second year plants that we were going to turn over at the end of the season. Um, it's really been a great thing. And I think we, if that rule is that you absolutely cannot eat, then we have to do away with that. And I think we will. Um, ask people not to bring kids younger than six. Um, I don't know, we're still, <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping that maybe by June 20th, when we probably are planning to open, that maybe there'll be some different guidelines on that. 
happened, uh, but, but we'll see. We are gonna post signs and, and direct people to take what you touch um, and discard any unwanted berries. You know, if people pick up a berry that has damage on it or is white or whatever, that they uh, will have compost buckets around for them to put those in. So we won't hopefully end up with anything on the ground um, for somebody else to, to come in contact with. I'll let you know how that works. Um, also, as always, we'll ask people to leave their dogs at home. As always, I'm sure we'll have some arguments with people about that. But and we we also will have a posting about the porta potty, mentioning that it is it will be available. But we will be asking that um, for people's safety, they only use it when necessary, and then make use of the disinfectant that we will have. That we do have available there. Um, we will post saying and tell people that it, the um, money transaction will be um, our preference is Venmo. It has worked really well in this spring season uh, in our farm stand and with our our whole pre-order system. Um, but we will say that it'll be exact change only. So cash, checks, or or Venmo. Uh, we would like not to handle credit cards and definitely will not be making change. So we're hoping people will give us a lot of tips. We'll see <laughs> how that works. Um, we will also tell people that we can't invite them to picnic on the farm or tour the farm. This also will be um, disappointing to people. Um, our local library has offered to set up a story walk along the path from the driveway to the um, field where they will take pictures of a children's book um, and uh, laminate them so that there's something you know for kids to sort of read on the way back and forth that's going to be a, like the feeble farm tour for this year and um and i guess i guess that's pretty much it um, we expect, we anticipate extra costs in containers. We've had a lot of people always bring their containers. We're not sure what to do about repeat customers. You know, if once they come and get our container, can they bring that container back? Um, if it's in one of those three container sizes, probably yes. Um, but yeah, I think the biggest prop, the biggest change for us is this change from uh, charging by weight to charging by volume. Hey, Jamie, um, thank you so much for sharing all that. There is one question that's coming up specifically for you about if you're using your square scheduling, if you're able to schedule multiple customers at one time using that tool. Yes, um, hopefully we can schedule, uh, well, I think we can schedule Oh, you mean for the same time period? Yes, I believe you can. Great. Yeah. But, and if that doesn't work, we want to use that because our, our website is Squarespace. I have to say, uh, we haven't really tested this out yet. Um, if that doesn't work, we will go to Sign Up Genius, but we're hoping we can kind of be consistent with our website. Great. Um, and one more question just while you're in the hot seat here from Vern that I also have heard from a couple of other growers who emailed pre this call is about um, whether or not you're planning to increase your price as best you can um, yeah. with your switch to, to cover some of the added costs of this year. Um, we have been charging for a million years, $4 a pound. <laughs> uh, I don't, I actually, I mean, we're certified organic. Um, I don't really know. So that would mean that a quart, we would be basically charging um, $5 a quart for the four quart trays, $20 for the eight quart trays, $40. I really don't know that we can charge more. Um, I think probably Vern will be charging less because they will be, um, they will be, you know, mounting up containers. But, um, so it's hard to say. I mean, I am hoping that perhaps we can, this would be an, if something for Maddie to put out to uh, 
to the state. I, I think some of our, our costs like uh, hand sanitizer, I mean, we've never provided hand sanitizer for people, extra masks, people will come without masks, I'm sure. Um, disinfectant, um, there will be a lot of extra, the signage. I mean, I've had old signs, but they don't say things like wear a mask. Um, so there are gonna be extra costs. And I, uh, I guess we're hoping to, and we'll, we, we are also expecting to be wholesaling more okay. berries than in the past. Careful that it's pretty hot in here, like Jennifer, don't either. We've got a, we've got a unmute situation. Um, I think that's about it. So I, I, I would say we're basically not looking to increase prices. So we're hoping yeah. everybody out there will kind of hold firm with prices and not lower them. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much, Eugenie. That's super helpful to hear how you're thinking about things and um, and the questions that you have too. I'm I'm sure that there there are a lot of questions that you know everyone's kind of again figuring this out together. So it's great to be able to just hear your process. Um, and I do just want to lift up what you started with, which was really a, a great effort to keep this very joyful. So despite some of the things that feel disappointing about the way things have to work this year. Um, Maintaining the joy is, is part of the work. So thank you for sharing that. Um, and for those of you who missed in the beginning, I did just wanna give a quick um, shout to Maddie from NOFA who's on the call. She's our policy director and is just asking for some um, thoughts and information from growers about um, to help, help advise the state on where funds um, that are, miss. let's see. Maddie, maybe I should just let you do this. Oh yes, just in, looking for input from for the Ag Committee about funding um, specifically that the state is receiving for COVID. So it sound, and Vern suggested that it's really, it would be really helpful to hear from folks who are having to spend more on things like you, Janie said, um, to, to, to share that with Maddie, either in the chat box or using her email, maddie at nofavermont.org. Um, they're, they're submitting some, some comments tomorrow. So that's really helpful to hear from folks um, to make sure we're getting funding in the right places to help everyone who's spending more to, to make this all happen. Um, so thanks again, Eugenie, and thanks again to all of you who are still here with us. I want to um, pass, the, pass the, the mic, the torch, the video to um, Sue Haney from Sweet Seasons Farm who can share a little bit about um, how she's thinking about this. And then after that, we'll just open it up for some discussion and question time. So go ahead, Sue. Hey, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Um, thank you, Eugenie. That was very encouraging what you shared. And we, um, we agree exactly what you're saying about being positive and being upbeat about it, even though it's a significant challenge. I, I can tell you right now, we've been posting on Facebook letting all of our customers know that, you know, it's a privilege to be able to open a UPIC during this pandemic. And I think with that being said, you know, we have a mission. Our mission is to provide delicious, nutrient dense food to build our immune system. And I think our customers are very eager and excited to get out there and to be able to pick and get ready for the winter to start storing their, their blueberries and, you know, strawberries and raspberries. So we're, um, we're a certified naturally grown fruit farm in St. Johnsbury, and we grow hazelnuts, raspberries, some uh, superfood berries, blueberries, and apples. And our biggest um, challenge is the blueberry orchard. It's uh, two and a half acres, 2,400 plants, but we only have 13 parking spots. <laughs> so um, what we're going to do, what we've decided to do is if we have 13 parking spots, we're going to open up on a first come first serve basis. And whoever's there first gets to come in first and you know, we're gonna assign them to their row. If you come in and um, we're, we can't manage any more people, we're gonna have our customers call us on the phone. We're gonna get their number and it's kind of like a paging system. So what we'll do is we'll call them back. Hey, come on in, it's time for you. And that's so much easier for us to let, let people come in first come first serve because we tried to do appointments with our chocolate and our frozen blueberries during the winter time when COVID-19 started. And it was a challenge because people, they wouldn't show up or they'd forget, you know, all these things were happening. So we, we figured for the UPIC, we'll do first come first serve. Um, 
I think the I think the thing we've spent a couple of months discussing, my business partner and I, is the the objections that we're going to have from our customers and visitors that might be coming from out of town, and how are they going to feel? You know, some people are all for wearing a mask, and some people aren't for wearing a mask. You know, how are we going to handle our customers that love to eat our berries? You know, last year we did a thing called pick and eat where you pay three dollars and fifty cents and you could eat all you wanted you know and we made about five hundred dollars doing that so that kept my husband happy he wasn't like they're eating all our fruit and it was great the parents loved it because the kids could do whatever they want and you know we still recovered some of our expense but this year it's it's going to be prohibited so we put together this little um little uh a game for the kids to play so and you know they'll each have a little pencil that we will sanitize after they're done and they can if they um, answer all the questions to this little game that we created they will get a little piece of chocolate because we sell chocolate confections but we'll have it pre-packaged and you know if you don't eat your blueberries and you follow all of our guidelines you're going to get to go home with a little piece of chocolate and i think that will help lessen the the impact of gosh you know we used to be able to eat on your farm and now we can't you know because not everybody's going to be as as understanding as we'd like them to be. But, you know, I, I've been telling our customers on Facebook, you know, thank you for supporting us. Thank you for cheering us on. Thank you. We, we need your cooperation right now. You know, it's a privilege for all of us to be able to open up our farms to you. And your cooperation is, is it's earnestly appreciated. So um, I think that's the biggest thing I have because I like to please people and I don't want to upset anybody, but I, I got to follow these regulations that the state puts out. And I think most of our customers will understand that. As far as some practical things that we've done that's a little bit different is um, we're going to have a waiting area for people that are checking out because we don't have an outdoor way to check people out. We, um, we need a scale that's on a level surface. So, and we, so we have to do our transactions in the farm store. All the windows will be open. We have fans we bought. Um, we can have about three people at a time in our farm store. That's our, our limit. But we're going to set up tents in a section where we'll have chairs and they'll be spaced six feet apart. So while, if, you're, if it gets that busy and you're waiting to go into the farm store, you could sit under the tent in the shade with your berries on your lap. We have containers that we give. I wish I had, a, I wish I had one with me, but we, we've been doing this. This is our fourth season and we've been doing this since we've opened. We have these white containers that are plastic. They're cool. We like everyone to put their berries in these containers. They come in, we weigh them, and then we're going to be transferring them instead of the customer's container. We bought these recyclable green plastic bags. They're, they're disposable, but they're recyclable. And we're just going to put the berries in those bags and the customer could take them, home, take them out to their car. If they want to put them in their own containers when they get to their car, that's fine too. So, you know, we're just, we're trying to keep the handling down, you know, less than the amount of handling of products. We spent about $500 on hand sanitizer and we have a, we have a um, big game fence in our orchard. It's an eight foot tall fence and we're able to mount these sanitizers on the fence post. So when you walk up the aisle, you can sanitize your hand anytime you need to. We'll have one at the entrance, you know, when you come in, when you leave. The um, wash station for some of you, I don't know if you know about this, but I, I, I'm, in, I'm inspected by the health department all the time and I, I go to a lot of festivals and events and when you're using utensils, the health department will allow you to create your own wash station with an igloo container. You have to have it on a table, and below that, you need a five-gallon bucket. On your table, you could have a roll of paper towels, your hand sanitizer, you know, soap, a bottle of um, a disinfectant to spray the little spigot that you might want to use to, you know, if the customer needs to wash their hands, they can press that little spigot, soap up, lather up, you know, have a little waste basket there. So you don't have to spend a lot of money on a wash station. And that's from the Department of Health. The Vermont Department of Health allows that. So that's, if you need more information, you could talk to me about that later, but that'll help keep your prices down, you know, costs down. Um, another thing that, that we're, we're, we're looking at is the face mask. You know, that, it, that's, a, again, that's like a, that's a sticky wicket because it's encouraged. The documentation says it's encouraged. We have several customers that have asthma 
and wearing a face mask for them isn't going to help. Now, and I, again, I don't really know if I'm allowed to do this, so we're just brainstorming right now. But I was thinking maybe we could have, for anyone who has a, they're not sick, they don't have COVID-19, but they might have a problem with asthma. They still want to pick. You know, we, we were going to sell masks for, you know, 50 cents, sell them a mask. But if they say, look, I have an issue here, we, we have a section that is away from the orchard where we might be able to have, call it a non-mask section for only those customers that do struggle with asthma or breathing conditions. You know, we could talk about that. That's just a thought because I, I have four customers that have asthma and they're, they buy 100 pounds a year. And I'm like, how can we work this out for them where they can have an opportunity to still pick? Maybe they could come when we're not open, you know, during non-business hours and pick. But, um, you know, it's something that we need to think about. Um, but we, again, we also want to think about public safety. So that's just the thought I wanted to put out there. And then, you know, real quickly, another thing, um, um, we do have to raise our prices. And I, you're probably going to laugh. Some of, some of you might laugh. We charge... 375 a pound for our blueberries and we're certified naturally grown. So we're a holistic permaculture type farm, but we're, we're going to have to go up to $4 a pound. And I know it's only a quarter, but I'm in the Northeast kingdom. It's a, a very low income up here, but uh, what we do do that's really neat that might keep our customers. We hope is we have this thing where if you pick 25 pounds, the price goes down a quarter a pound. So, and the way it works is each time you come, I have a, we have a little, uh, program that my husband designed and we log you in and we track how many pounds you pick. So if you came the first time and you picked 10 pounds, you came the second time you picked 15 pounds, that equals 25. You get the discount on those 15 pounds. So we're, we have to go up a quarter, but we're going to still knock off a quarter as you get closer to 25 pounds. Um, the other thing I, I wanted to share real quickly is the, the whole thing about the health and safety officer. We are VOSHA certified because of our chocolate business. And I think when you're BOSHA certified, it's a great thing to do. It's only a two hour, it's two hour. It took us two hours to go through the training, but it was very informative. And if, if you're going to have an employee become the health and safety officer, highly recommend them going through the BOSHA certification. We both, my husband and I are certified in it. So we can serve as health and safety officers. Um, let's see if there's anything else. I know we only, we have a limited amount of time. I don't want to wear out my welcome with everybody. Uh, huh. I think, um, I can't think of anything else. If there's any, um, oh, payment plan, payment. We, we are going to be doing Venmo and PayPal as much as possible. And again, you know, uh, checks, uh, I mean, I, I'll have a can of Lysol spray. I'll spray every dollar bill if I have to, you know, if somebody comes in and says, oh, I don't have a credit card or I don't have anything, you know, credit cards are tough because you know, as all of us farmers know, there's that square, you got to pay that fee. And some of us are on loans and some of us, you know, we, we, every little penny does matter to us. So the Venmo thing is great. PayPal is another thing that doesn't charge a fee. But I was wondering, can we use cash and sanitize it with Lysol or, you know, to give out change if somebody absolutely doesn't have Venmo or PayPal so we don't have to turn customers away? Um, yeah, Sue, thanks for your, thanks so much for all of your, if you want to keep sharing there, we, we do have a little time, but I, I did, I think it might be a good time to, um, to transition here into our, our discussion and, and, and we could use that question as a starting off point. I, I do want to just um, point folks to the chat box again, that that question about cash sales did come up and Abby confirmed that you can still do cash sales and that um, pre-scheduled and electronic sales are encouraged, but not um, not required. So cash sales are okay. Um, again, thank you so much, Sue, for sharing your thoughts here. I'm just really encouraged by the amount of um, just creativity that is going into building these systems this year that, you know, so much extra thought. And, um, you know, one thing I think is important to keep in mind is uh, just remembering that there's, there's good that can come out of innovation and um, that crisis, crisis helps to show us what's possible. So I'm just amazed by all of what's possible in this sector here. Um, so with that, I will say again, um, that it's time, I think, to just open it up. I know, um, there are several apple growers as well on the call. We haven't really touched on apples yet. 
Um, so what we're going to do here is if folks, um, if folks want to share, you can unmute yourself and do so. We'll try to, um, you know, moderate our, I'll be the moderator as much as I can, but we're going to learn as we go, depending on how eager or not folks are to speak. Um, I will just ask if you're asking a question, um, that's great. If you're, if you're, if you're planning to share a little bit or respond, I, I, I'll just request that folks just keep an eye on the time and um, remember that there's a lot of people on the call. We want to really make sure we answer a lot of questions. So if you do start sharing about your farm to um, to keep it brief and we can do our best to sort of connect folks on this call too to, to keep supporting each other through the actual season as, as farms are opening up for pick your own um, So again chat box is open. We've got some good conversation going on in there and um, if anyone would like to ask a question or, um, or Share feel free to unmute yourself and do that now well, this is Vern, and there's been some questions and answers already, but Abby and Christina, it's probably worth clarifying. So many farms have other enterprises besides Pick Your Own happening at the same time. What are the rules there? That is a really good question. Uh, and I'll, I guess I'll just say in general, and then pass it off to Abby, that the Pick Your Own guidelines only apply to the Pick Your Own part of your operation and the other other guidelines may apply whether it's farm stand guidelines or whether you're you know you're serving food that people are able to consume um, off-site or you have a, a cafe like the um, particular other types of activities will need to meet the requirements for those activities So once they leave the pick your own area, essentially the pick your own guidelines are no longer in effect. It's the guidelines for whatever other enterprise they're entering. Is that the way? Yeah, so Vern, it's a great question and it is complicated. And I think Christina did a nice job of sort of outlining that there are different aspects of the farm and different requirements that come into um, consideration depending on, on, on the complexity of the, of the model. So this is where I'm going to share a little bit about the, the no eating, uh, you know, the no on-site consumption of food example. So um, there was a recommendation or a, a question posed of what if a pick your own operation also sells creamies and that section of the, the restart plan that says um, you know, to limit the risk of contamination, on-site consumption of food is, is prohibited. And so the way that that sort of is working out is that if, it, it de the answer is it depends. <laughs> and so um, if a farm stand, if a farm sells creamies to your pick your own customers as part of your pick your own operation, then that creamy should be sold and taken off site and consumed off the farm um, per, per the guidance kind of recommendation that we just said. If the farm that has a pick your own operation also has a farm stand that serves food and there's seating, um, then that farm stand is subject to the critical retail guidance or if it's even a cafe or a restaurant as Christina was saying then that guidance applies for the farm and at that point the farm stand itself is not viewed as a pick your own operation but instead is a retail operation and so then retail guidance applies um, that's where curbside pickup would still be the preference um, but occupancy kind of situations would come into play for for the farm so it really does depend upon um, the nature of the business model. So that may make things more complicated or that might actually make people feel a little bit more comfortable. I'm not sure which. Or maybe do people just need some kind of clear delineation? That's sort of what it sounds like. You're in pick your own and now you're, now you're in the farm stand section. And just so you can do your counting of occupancy and allowable behaviors like eating. 
Yes, I would agree, Vern. Can I uh, run a quick scenario and see if I understand what's being said on that score? Um, Helen, thanks for thanks for joining. I think that's a great idea. And I, I also something I mentioned, I forgot to mention is that when you share, if you could um, just say your name and your farm. So we're just having a context of where you're where you're coming from. That'd be great, Helen. Thanks. Okay, great. Um, this is Helen Weibrow, and I'm calling in from Knoll Farm in Faston. We have a fairly small pick your own blueberry operation. It's about an acre and a half. Um, and we also, we're also a very public place. We get lots and lots of visitors and a lot of people come and use our hiking trails, um, picnic on the hill. We have a, about 160 acres. Um, so we are thinking of opening our pick your own. We've been kind of on the fence. Um, we definitely will be doing a lot more wholesale this year, but we figure we have so many people who just come here anyway. Um, that if we're not open, we're going to be constantly asked <laughs> by people if they can pick berries. So we we're planning on going through all of these protocols, roping off sections that are probably larger than 200 square feet, actually, for picking zones and taking people up there and showing them where they're able to pick and limiting the number of people who can pick. Um, and then what we're wondering about is whether we could have kind of a separate group, a separate quota of people who would be allowed to walk and picnic on the hillside away from the orchard um, and not consuming any food like down near the orchard or the farm stand. Would that be permissible if we kept those people to a limited number and they were socially distanced in their family groups? That's kind of our question. Does anyone know? <laughs> Excuse me. Hey, Helen. Um, it's a great, great question. I'm glad that you asked it. Um, I frankly would have to sort of look, I think, at some of the additional guidance because I don't think that that would be farm guidance. But I, but I'm not exactly sure. I. Because the question is, can can people picnic on the farm or on a distant location on the hill at the farm while you pick is happening or while other activities are occurring? Um, yeah, and if we limit it, I mean, if we know exactly, we were also going to have people sign in and sign out so that we could do contact tracing if we needed to, and we knew exactly how many people were on the land at any one time. Yeah, my guess is this is in the category of outdoor retail. I'm curious what Christina thinks or anyone else, but my guess is it would be, again, a limitation on occupancy of no more than one customer per 200 square feet. So I don't think it's a, it's a I think it's a retail component. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think if, I don't know if this would matter, but if, if you're selling folks the food that they're then picnicking with, it might be a retail or a restaurant type um, scenario. And I do think that having people sign in and out and keeping their info for contact tracing is definitely a best practice. But if they're like bringing their own food and you're just allowing them to enjoy the space, I wonder if it's actually just outdoor recreation, um, which has its own set of guidance, but might be a little bit more flexible. But I definitely appreciate your thinking it through. I would probably recommend contacting the Agency of Commerce and Community Development for some clear guidelines mm -hmm. on that type of activity. Okay, is there someone in particular that, that you recommend that I call to talk it through? Um, we could provide we have a particular one. email in, in, oh sorry, go ahead Abby. I'll pull up the section of the website where you, you can get contact information, but go ahead. That, that's what I was going to say. There's, a, there's just a general commerce question around guidance because outdoor recreation is not the agency of agriculture, nor is retail. 
um, the agency of agriculture jurisdiction. We really are only responsible for this sector specific guidance that was designed for at this point farmers markets and pick your own. So agency of commerce community development is the best place to go for kind of the, the clear and um, kind of comprehensive interpretation of, of what what would be required there. Okay, so we can put that contact in the Awesome, thank you. Sue, did you want to just share something on that? Yeah, I did. Let me just, uh, oh, am I you're, muted? No, you're, we can hear you. Go ahead. Oh, good. Okay. Well, I was looking at the document. Item 1.6 does say at the end that um, PYO customers are prohibited from areas of the farm not involved in the PYO farm operation. So maybe in, in um, this farm's case, if people are coming just to picnic, they're not, they're not going to pick fruit and then go have a picnic, but they're just coming to have a picnic and that's it. It sounds like it doesn't even fall under item 1.6 that so that might be permissible. Right, it doesn't sound to me like what Helen's describing is it's a pick your own activity. It's actually a different activity occurring on the farm. Um, and it may not even be covered under the farm guidance, but actually some other And again, unless like Christina said, there's some interaction happening between the customer and the farm stand then it might be a little bit different but that's not exactly what helen described so yeah i, I don't think it's actually farm related guidance but i would this is Vern. you know when you get to the next revision if you do that section that sue just pointed out is a little confusing i think it was intended to keep people from wandering around the farm when they came for pick your own not to keep them from going to another farm enterprise That's a good point of clarification. Thank you. And that's true. And Vern, Vern, you actually provided comment on that section when we worked on the draft. And, th and that is true. That is the intent is to say that it's not sort of um, intended to just sort of wander through the farm in other activities. You can certainly go to the retail establishment. You can certainly visit the farm stand or the farm cafe or the greenhouse or the other reasons that you might be on the farm um, to engage in commerce with the business. Yeah, that's the part I found the most confusing too. And I guess what I would want to ask someone is, is it okay to still have visitors explore the farm in very limited ways? Like all of our buildings are going to be closed all summer. All of our bathrooms are going to be closed. Like, but if, but we have so much acreage, like if someone wanted to go and sit on a hill and see the sheep from a hundred yards away would that be okay like so i thank you i don't want to take up any more time because i know a lot of people have a lot of great questions and ideas but i will call the agency of commerce and see if i can figure it out thank you so much hi everybody this is charlie here from four corners farm in new river vermont um i had a question uh what about doing wagon rides so it's we here we have a hay field that we just mowed off our first cut can we park cars in there and then schedule, let's say like a wagon ride, wagon ride route to the strawberry field, drop the people off, they can, then they can start picking. So then we can sort of regulate the flow of the amount of people entering the farm at a time. Hi, Charlie, that's a great question. Um, I don't know. Because that's I, what I'm sort of thinking is, is is also you know we'll start at at seven and by nine we may get a 15 or 20 car pile up you know all at once and we're sort of thinking of one way of I maybe mean, you could turn uh make the fields so they go in like in a one-way direction so they would come and get their containers and then enter the field and, and you know and that, that that's what i sort of picked up for tonight which would be a really really good add to all of this i think you'd still have to maintain the social distancing on the wagon yeah, so, so you can, yeah, we have a, we have the, like the Stolzis hay wagon. So it'd be possible to put a, a staircase at one end and a staircase at the other end. That's just that pull up on the wagon and then you have, you know, X capacity per wagon. So. Yeah, it sounds like it could be a good way to limit the flow. And, but if, you know, you only had, if you had like, say, two families per wagon, trip and they were able to keep six feet apart and also keep six feet apart from your employees it sounds like 
um, you know, I, I kind of focus in on that social distancing element when you're trying to figure out whether it's feasible or not. It, yeah, and also to add to that, what if you were to add, uh, like say wagon rides on the side. So let's say you hit your quota for your field and you see it, you see some someone coming out, but or, or you know how long they have, let's say they have five minutes left to pick, but you don't want to really rush them along. So you could have a wagon ride option. So it's like, oh, we've hit field capacity, but you can you can take this wagon ride around the farm and look at everything. And by the time you get back from it, your spot will be open to enter the field. Yeah, I mean, I think that all that would be required would be the the public health and safety social distancing requirements on the wagon. Yeah, so that's yeah, that would be a pretty feasible possibility to to, yeah. to slow that. So then you can, as the farmer, you can control the pace in your in your picking field. Yeah, and then you just have to manage the, the no congregation as they're entering the wagon, getting off the wagon, heading over mm -hmm. to get their container for you pick. So, you know, there, yeah. there may still be some bottlenecks that you'd have to kind of orient the one directional flow and keep the, the six foot distance between people. Yeah, it, it, is, it could be a bug because I was picking up on the, on the kids section. Way. It's almost like to, to break that up. So it's, you can have, it, it, it's sort of strict, but relax and strict, you know, it's like strict fun time in the strawberry field, but then they can, the kids can have this one moment where they can sort of like, you know, it, otherwise I, I just have this possibility of kids coming and feeling like everything is restricted and you can't do anything to touch it. So it's, it's, a, it's another way to keep, keep everything positive and, and, uh, and then you can adjust the flow of people on the farm. Yeah, it's a really interesting idea. Let us know if it works. I'm curious. Yeah, we also. Uh, we're gonna go and thanks so much for the great information and we we'll see you guys on the other side of strawberry season. Thank you. Thanks, Charlie. Anyone else have questions or want to share some perspective on some of the things that have come up on the call so far? Feel free to unmute. Could I just ask real quick, since we have um, Abby and Christina here, I know it's um, about like three years until apple season, uh, but is there plans to like revisit any of this guidance at any point? Like, is there a certain time when you think you might be maybe releasing some new updates or anything like that? Yeah, so Bill, it's a good question. We, we're, we're getting those questions um, by email this week. Um, and I did just post that email address in the chat as well as a phone number that reaches our produce program if people continue to have questions um, as time goes on, um, which I'm sure you will and we're more than happy to help you. Um, the, I, I don't know if, I think this is such an unprecedented time. It's so impossible to know what our ability to update guidance will be for a time frame in which we won't know what, at this moment, what our COVID kind of status will be. Um, so I think many sectors are asking that, whether it's the nursery and greenhouse community or the farmer's market community or the construction community or whomever, everyone wants to know when is this gonna be re-examined or the restaurant community to know when we can kind of get closer and back to normal. And um, I agree, it does feel that the apple picking season is eons away. And um, I, I think we're just gonna have to each and every week wait and see what our numbers look like, what the trends are, and what the administration feels comfortable from a, um, a science-based data-informed decision-making process around adjusting the phase of uh, recovery that we're in. But um, it still is really helpful for us to receive feedback on what will or won't work or what is and isn't working for various sectors so that we can continue to kind of just catalog those requests and keep those in mind for when we're in an opportunity, hopefully soon, sooner rather than later, to make modifications to the guidance. And then we, and we kind of have your, your input, which is appreciated. Can I just say one more thing? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah I, I just, I think that uh, as, as growers and as the people that are going to be um, 
in charge of these operations. I really do think we need to be um, very kind of self selfish about guarding our own health. Um, I know that the, the kind of trend right now seems to be to be relaxing and opening up and maybe I don't need the mask or maybe the, I'm really tired of washing my hands and using hand sanitizer. But, um, and for a customer coming, they will come once or twice or three times, they'll pick their strawberries and they'll, they'll leave. But you and your employees are gonna be there every day, you know, for three weeks or whatever your particular fruit season is. And um, I think that it, we need to impress on our customers that all of the things that are gonna seem a bit restrictive, um, you know, cracking down on not eating or whatever, or time spent in the field or, you know, whatever you decide, cash or no cash, it is for, it's for their safety, but it really is so that the farm can continue to operate. And I know that, I mean, I'm just speaking for our farm, we've already been operating under kind of stress for the past three months. Um, it has not, it's not easy doing farm stands and deliveries and pre-order. I mean, I am really sick of pre-order, <laughs> but, um, and we, and deliveries where you deliver to wholesale accounts and the receivers aren't wearing masks. I mean, we, we are really, um, kind of at, I think we're all at risk, maybe not some of you are younger than me, so you're not as at risk as me, but I do, I think that we really need to kind of, um, kind of get through this year. We'll, you know, there'll be another year where things maybe will be more fun and just stress the, how the, just stress the wonderfulness of your, your, your fruit. They'll get in their car, they'll be able to smell that fruit, they'll get home and then they can use it. And if they get ushered away and can't picnic and can't eat there, oh well, it'll still be better than going to you know the grocery store. Thank you, Eugenie. I think that's so important to to share and remember. Anyone else want to chime in? Yeah, I'd like to say something too. Thank you, Eugenie. I, I appreciate that because I think if we let our customers know too, you know, we've, we, we don't want to get penalized. <laughs> we don't, we, we need to comply with the state and the regulations. We, we need to protect ourselves because we are there all summer long. You know, like you said, they'll come and go, but we have to be very careful to guard our health as well. Um, so thanks for sharing that. You know, another thing too, I was, I wrote a thing. I'm sorry, I should have asked the question, but um, cause I know it's really hard, you know, it's hard for me when I'm in the orchard picking blueberries. I, you know, how you throw popcorn in your mouth and you can catch it. Some people can do that. I'm really good at doing that with blueberries and I love to eat, you know, I'll throw them in my mouth. I wear gloves. I do hand sanitizer just in general. We've been doing that since we opened. So we're used to that part, but I was like, man, how am I going to do this whole thing with not eating while I'm picking for my wholesale clients because I can throw them right in and no no contact you know and I have to wear a mask now so I've lost that privilege and but I realize the greater privilege is to be able to grow as a grower you know I, I'm from Los Angeles originally and when I moved to Vermont 15 years ago I never would have dreamed that I could do what we're doing here you know this is a and so I see it as a privilege and I think when the customers see our excitement and enthusiasm that we understand this is a real privilege to COVID-19 or no COVID-19, it is a privilege to have a farm, to be able to go to the farm and bring your child to pick and, and, or just come as an adult, you know, and pick. It's a, it's a great privilege. So one of the things I want to suggest to other people that if you might be struggling with this, how am I going to tell people they can't eat, you know, and because no farmer likes to get on your back, stop eating, stop eating. We don't like to do that. But we made this big, I wish I had it, it's in the farm store. We made a big poster. And when you go in our farm, every row has a berry name. So we, we educate you on the varieties. And so what we used to do for the people that didn't want to pay for the pick and eat, we give them samples. And I know we can't do that anymore. So we made this big poster describing each variety, what it's going to taste like. If you're more tart, 
get Patriots. If you want huge ones, get Spartan. If you're going to cook, you know, buy the North, pick the Northlands. And, and when somebody asked a question in here about how are we managing the traffic? Um, our, it's, we're very fortunate. Our, our orchard is like a book. It's undulates like a book. It's got a spine down the middle. It's very easy to do a one way in and a one way out. And it's very easy to assign people say, these are the varieties we have. Which variety do you want? Here's the row. This is your row. We have these little flags that we're going to mark when we know somebody's on that row. If a family's on, you know, the rows are very, very long. Our rows are 150 feet long. So we could probably put two families on that same row, bump one family up and let the other family start in the beginning. You know, there's ways you can, you can spread people out pretty easily and flag it. If you can get those little um, red flags, I think that would help keeping track of where things have been picked, you know? So sorry, I'm jumping around on that, but I'm just having a lot of thoughts coming in on the other things I didn't mention during the presentation of how we can help people, you know, you, you, you could still have fun, even if you don't get to eat, you could still have a good time. Like you said, you do when you go home, what do you get, what, you know, have the children draw a picture of what your mom's going to make with those blueberries when you get home. So, um, anyway. Thank you, Sue, for that perspective. Any other, any other thoughts to share, questions? Vern, if there's anything else you've been hearing from growers or questions you want to bring in. Um, oh, I'm just giving a shout out to all the creativity and forbearance. It was well stated to get through this year. It's not going to be forever. And to remind people, um, you know, you're doing it for them, you're doing it for yourselves. It's a super healthy product. I guess the one thing that does come on my mind too is, you know, just sort of prioritizing. Um, it's the congregation that's probably <laughs> on my mind most as, as really high risk if people do start to bunch up somewhere. Um, and, be, you know, the mass thing is a big question because it's not required, it's optional. I think it, farm is going to have to decide if they want to mandate that or not and to make it as easy as possible for people to do it um, but it's going to be tricky especially when it's hot and uh, just I think thinking ahead to have your strategy of how you're going to how you're going to deal with something if you make it a requirement and people don't comply what what's your plan thanks Fern Well, I will say that it has um, been so great to be with you all and have some time to really just hear from hear from from you all and come together on this. I I am just looking forward to all the berries personally. Um, I do want to thank you to every send a big thank you to the um, presenters, Abby and Christina and Eugenie and Sue. Um, and Vern as well, and a couple other folks from UVM Extension are also um, all available as resources for you. Um, so please do, um, we'll share out some contact information um, as needed. And um, what else? We're going to be posting this recording um, over the next couple of days. So um, if folks in your network want to um, listen in and weren't able to be here, we'll, we'll make that available. Um, and yeah, just know that as you, as questions come up and as, you know, I'm sure as things, as your businesses begin to open and offer pick your own, I think more questions will arise. So don't forget that, um, all of these folks are and resources are available to you. NOFA Vermont is here for you as well. And the farmer services team. Um, so please do keep in touch and, um, and remember to keep in touch with each other. I think, you know, everyone will get pretty swamped in with their, with your seasons. Um, but, but there are, there are quite a few of you all out there who are going to be doing this together. And, um, you know, I, I just, thanks Eugenie for really just naming the, the great amount of stress that is, is around right now for everyone. And, and, um, for sure, far, all of you farmers are really, you're all so essential and all being put under a lot of stress right now in creating these new systems. So I think that it's important to remember that you're all in it together. And I think that's one of the things that I really appreciate about webinars like this is just the opportunity to see like, we had 35 people on the call who are all coming together to try to work this out together. So 
thank you all for showing up and being here. Um, one last little plug to get some thoughts to Maddie um, at NOFA, Maddie at NOFA Vermont to help guide um, some resources towards farmers. If, you're, if you've got things that you've been spending more money on than usual because of COVID, we wanna know about them so we can make sure you're, you're getting um, funds flowing back to you. And thank you again for all being here. It's been, a, it's been an honor and looking forward to all of the delicious food coming out of all your fields. <laughs>